excited to talk about four month olds. It's such a fun stage. So yeah. I wanted to talk about tummy time at four months mm -hmm. old. Oftentimes babies might start to be rolling, might start to roll mm -hmm. and they stop being engaged in tummy time. How do you keep tummy time interesting and how do you keep them engaged at four months? Yeah. So I always like to think about tummy time in terms of um, engaging their senses and also engaging them in just novel experiences. At this point in tummy time, they are getting stronger and able to lift and hold their head up, bearing some weight through their arms, but they're not yet usually able to really grasp and manipulate toys in tummy time. So we can think about giving them things to touch, things under their hands in particular to touch and grasp that, but they're not great yet about actually playing with things and grasping. So we wanna think about different textures you can put under baby's hands and things like that. And I think about like the sensory ideas around, um, we put, you know, you have an idea for putting rosemary and mint in a yeah. tray. You can do ice in a tray. Um, yeah. There's a lot of fun things that you can do to kind of keep that interest level high. You obviously have to supervise them, yeah. but they're because their hands are open and they're not yet putting things in their mouth, it's a really good opportunity to... Yeah, there's like a little magical window and it's short, but there is a magical window where they sort of discover their hands and that they can do some things with their hands, but they're not yet as driven to put it in their mouth. So you're right there. Your attention is fully on baby, but you do still have a little bit of liberty to do some more fun stuff before they start putting it in their mouth. And I like at this age, if baby is not yet able to reach in tummy time, I like to prop baby up to free the hands so that their weight is actually being held by a nursing pillow or a folded up towel or blanket and they can actually engage in something that's kind of beneath their hands and just knock it around and feel it and hear it um, without having to grab it and play with it the way a six or nine month old baby might. And lots of babies, they actually don't like tummy time or they might've liked it before, mm -hmm. but then they stop liking it. Mm -hmm. um, how do you tell parents to think about um, how much tummy time? How do you think about reps of tummy time versus long extended periods? Right. When do you stop doing right. it in any, any given moment? Right. I mean, I, I teach responsive, respectful tummy time. And so I can't give you a set number of minutes at any week or month that your baby should be doing because I want your baby to be doing as much tummy time as they can be comfortable in. So for some babies, that looks like only a few minutes at a time at four months, but you're going to do it frequently throughout the day. So it's not a one and done. Oh man, he only does tummy time for two minutes. It's he does tummy time for two minutes, then we roll them out. We have a little googly eye moment and get them happy again. And then we roll them back in and we might do another minute and then we get in and bounce or hold or sing or whatever gets them happy again. And we try it again. So I think of these sort of reps of tummy time that create a whole set and then you want to have multiple sets throughout the day. And then what if they're rolling right out of tummy time? Yeah. So what do you do? Then you got to be a little more hands-on. So sometimes I'll put babies over my legs so that my hands are actually on them. Um, sometimes I let baby roll out and then I roll them back in and it becomes this sort of dance we're doing to prolong the tummy time, often upping the interest level, bringing something novel. Like I might get a um, new toy for them to feel and, and scrunch and make some noises with and things like that. Um, but really just at that point, you might have to get a little hands-on with that baby as long as they're happy in tummy time. I'm not going to force a baby who's crying in tummy time, but if it's just rolling out, I might use my body to kind of help reposition them. Yeah. And rolling. Let's talk about rolling yeah. over. So there's so many stages to rolling over that right. I didn't realize. So there's back to side, there's back to belly, and then right. there's belly to back. And actually belly to back sometimes comes a little bit sooner than back to belly. Mm -hmm. um, but it, you said it can be a big mix and there's a big range of when that shows up and also how much babies like to roll. So right. some babies like to roll all over to get around and then some babies don't. Can you talk to that a little bit? Yeah. I definitely think the order and sequence that it comes, I, I just wouldn't worry as a parent which way comes first. It just depends on your baby. A lot of times temperament, how much they like tummy time. Um, but basically what we're looking for is a baby to learn how to activate their front side of their body to crunch up in a ball to roll from back to belly. And then the opposite way when they're on their belly and they're trying to go to the back, they're using their extensor muscles through their back and moving their head. So, and, and then I thought, found it so fascinating when I was reading, but how you can create that connection between um, kicking and then rolling over. Yeah. So rolling from back to belly, you really have to activate the front side of your body, all those flexion muscles that curl you up like a little jelly bean. And so through kicking, that's one of the best ab workouts for babies is to lay on their back and kick their feet. And then when they start to bring their legs up the same thing, like when they're grabbing their feet, bringing their feet to their mouth. So kicking and playing with the feet is so important at this four month milestone. Yeah. And some fun ways to do that are tissue paper. Yeah. Um, you can hang tissue paper on the side of a couch 
porch and help them kick the tissue paper and understand mm -hmm. the cause and effect of the sounds. Absolutely. There's balloons. Yep. Um, I love to do mylar balloons and just clip it to their socks or tie it around their ankles. And they really do. Textbooks will tell you that cause and effect comes much later. But when you watch a four-month-old play with a mylar balloon, they're getting cause and effect. It's really fun. Yeah. And then the socks. The rattle socks mm -hmm. are so fun to kick. And there's Absolutely. the rolling, the bell and the play gym is really fun to kick. So. Yeah. So lots of fun kicking play. Yeah. And then um, sitting up. So yeah. oftentimes we think that our babies want to sit up and see the world mm -hmm. and um, we want to prop them up into little seats. And mm -hmm. is it appropriate to put a four month old in a, in a bumbo seat or in, in a you know, little seat? I would say for a four month old, most of the time that is not appropriate. And the way that you're gonna gauge that is when you put your baby on the floor and you're trying to help them sit, you think about how much support they need. So I don't wanna have a baby in a seat that needs more support than that seat can give them. So if you're still having to hold your baby at their rib cage, they're not ready for a seat and it's not gonna be helpful for the development to be in one. Um, however, if your baby is starting to sit and maybe just doesn't have the balance to sit independently and you need to use or want to use a seat to give yourself a few hands-free minutes, that's fine. I just want parents to know that that's not teaching sitting to their baby. So let's say you have a five and a half, six month old and you want to do that. That's not their developmental playtime, right? That's yeah. your convenient time to be hands-free with your baby, but the developmental work still needs to happen on the floor unrestricted. That's great. Thank you so much for being with us, Rachel. No problem.